<laughs> Hi, everyone. I am so sorry that I am late. Uh, my audio wouldn't work, so I had to switch back to my F3 audio, and then my stream wouldn't start, so I spent five minutes fussing with that. I am so sorry. Today is part two of the Sorsha Sew Along, and I did some playing with my pattern after finishing my red linen trousers, which I'm wearing, and I was really hoping, hey, Diane, welcome. Sorry I was late. I was having some technical issues. Can you hear me okay? I think it's going to be okay. Um, hey, Judy, welcome. All right, so... I was playing with my pattern because I got some more casual fabric from um, LA Finch Fabric in uh, California. And when it came in and I washed it, it had a really nice um, substantial feel to it. And it was really, really, um, I'm really excited to make it, but I wanted to make the, um, I wanted to make these this version of my Sorsha pants a little bit more fitted and a little less wide leg compared to the red linen ones. So the first thing I'm going to do, hey Mary, hey Amy. Oh, Amy is tracing her Sorsha pattern right now. Woo woo, so exciting. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is show you my, my um, trousers. I'm wearing them. Um, the one thing though is, you can see here I did not finish the waistband, but my sew tights have come into the rescue again because I can use them to hold down my waistband and use them as a button. So super excited. So I just wanted to show you these and I will be finishing them, but I ran out of time. So let me just go over here so you can see. I'm like in love with these pants. Okay, so this is how they look. Nice big pockets. Okay, so this is how my linen ones um, fit. And I just want to remi remind everybody, I did add about three quarters of an inch to the leg to make them a little bit more swishy and full. So super excited. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what people are saying here. Um, all right. So, <laughs> oh, Judy says she loves them. Diane says, um, uh oh, Diane, Amy's, um, Amy, Diane's calling you an overachiever. <laughs> um, and Amy says, hi to see Diane. I love that you guys interact with each other. Um, hey, Carol. Hey, Lean. Uh, hi, Barbara. You love the video on the sew tights. I use them and love them. Your suggestions were great. I've used them for even more things. When I was tracing my pattern um, to make a new version, I used the sew tights to um, hold the original pattern in my tracing paper together. So that was another thing I used them for. You know, and now, I don't know if you saw, Barbara, but I used them, using them to as a button here and then to hold my waistband down because I didn't finish the waistband yet. But just to give you one more look since some more people just rolled in, these are my red linen. I might have to shorten them a little bit more, but I really, really like these. I'm, I'm in love. So this is how they fit. They're super comfortable. Now this crotch does hang down a little bit. Okay, so trouser patterns have a crotch that hovers a little bit. So what I want to talk to you about now is a few things that I did to make um, a closer fitting trouser or, or pant. Um, okay. 
<laughs> Barbara says that that works. They work well on my pants. Well, I thought I was going to have time to sew the waistband, and then I didn't. So I apologize. I'm just, I was fussing around, and then I started fussing around more. So I ended up running out of time. Uh, Judy says she's um, had sew tights for four years, bought them at the Sew Expo. Um, Mary says, I love how the fabric is under the bum, the upper thighs. I can never get that drape. Um, well, I think part of the reason, Mary, is this, what I've noticed is when I was fitting the new pair that I'm working on now, the minute you try to bring that crotch up close to you, the fabric doesn't hang like that anymore. And then it starts to contour onto your legs. So I want to talk about, um, a few things. And I, I found this extremely interesting. Um, let me just switch my view. All right, so what I want to show you here is, now, one of the cool things about working with the single leg muslin and the separate waistband is that you can actually use your muslin over and over again. And I ended up taking it apart to double check my pattern after I um, finished fitting the second pattern or the second pair that I'm going to show you. Um, but you can see I took the darts out. But here's the interesting thing. This is the center back here. And can, is this, um, let me just check one thing. I want to make sure um, that it's super sharp. Hold on. I can't see in my monitor. I just want to check it here. Oh, yeah, I guess that is. All right, I just wanted to make sure you guys can see everything. All right, so what I thought was really, really interesting is this black line was my stitching line for the waistline on the red pants I'm wearing now. And this is a center back. This is a side seam. When I fit the um, when I fit the new pair on, I did two things. So the first thing I did is I lowered the waistband. So you can see on me... This waistband is up pretty high. Oops, I think I lost. Oh. All right, so in full transparency, the sew tights work well for a button, but then if you start sitting and moving, that doesn't work so great. So I just want to show you something here. So this is where the waistband sat for the red pair. And then when I did the second pair, I went down here. Okay, so I went across my belly button, so I lowered it about an inch and a half. So the red pair were higher rise. Here was where the waistband is um, for the pair I'm making now. So I just wanted to illustrate that I lowered the waistband. I didn't lower it in the back as much, as maybe like that. Okay, so I lowered the waistband, and this is one of the benefits of working with um, a separate waistband, you know where the pants are going to hang and then you fit them to this, which is much easier than putting them on your body with the waistband attached to the legs because you don't have a static or consistent place to do your fitting. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. All right, so now, let me get back to this here. So I did lower the waist a little bit, but you can see at the side seam, I ended up lowering it, well, almost maybe about that, but then watch what happened in the front. In the front, I went from down here even lower. So I, I lost almost three inches between the red ones and the ones I'm working on now. So I just thought that was kind of interesting um, that the waistline changed so much. And then here's another thing. Re if you guys watched my Fit Tip Tuesday a few weeks ago where I talked about how different pant styles have different ease and then different pant styles also... Um, let me get my book. Okay, I hope I didn't take it out of the book. 
The bad thing about having a loose leaf binder for this is sometimes I'll take the pages out and then not put them back like a bad girl. But I just want to show you here um, pants styles. Did I? Oh, I think I did get take the page out. Wait, hold on one second. Oh, yes, I did. All right, hold on one second. I'm sorry. I should have had this ready. Wait a minute. All right. So when I take a page out of my... Um, when I take a page out of my loose leaf book, oh, Diane is asking me about my picture. I changed my picture. Where is that? Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, is this better now? I'm sorry. Now you can see. So I think I did screw that up. I was looking at myself, but now you can see me and you can see what I'm trying to show you here. Does this work out better? I hope I fixed that. I think I, I did have that screwed up. I'm sorry. So what I want to show you here is I want to show you Okay, so this is what I want to show you. See, um, see these pictures in this book. So what I want to show you here is, um, yeah, I did have my small picture screwed up. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was taking up the whole screen. Um, what I want to show you here is a trouser. You can see by this dashed line that there's space around you and the crotch is lower. And then as it gets more fitted, you can see the fabric is drawn in towards your butt. So to get this nice hang off the end of your, or underneath your butt, you need to have longer crotch extensions, which the Sorsha Classic Slim Trousers have this style um, crotch extension. So I want my new ones to fit more like this. So, you know, I guess I'm not staying true to you know, keeping the, the exact style of the pattern that I'm working with exactly the same. But with a couple simple adjustments, you can change this to this and draw it in a little bit closer. So it's not just a matter of taking in the side seams and raising the crotch. You have to actually shorten your crotch wedges a little bit. So what I want to do is show you here... This pattern versus this pattern, and I'm just going to lay my red pattern on top of the new one I'm working on. So this is my this is the pattern I cut out my linen trousers, and what I want to show you here is, in addition to see how it's lower. It's lower at the waist, like I showed you on the muslin, but also what I did was I took off about three quarters of an inch from the tip of the crotch. Okay, so not only did I shorten it here, but I also shortened it here, and I did the same thing in the front. I shortened the front crotch just a little bit. So this is going to allow the pants to fit me closer. So, um, it's like I said, it's not just a matter of raising this up and down. It's also a matter of taking out a little bit of the depth or the, you know, by shortening the crotch. And also, obviously, if you want a more slender leg, taking it in through here also will create that. And you can see, if I make this big and a little less bright... You can see at the knee, my linen ones are about three quarters of an inch wider on each side. 
Um, so this is, this leg is the Sorsha classic slim trouser leg. I made it wider to, um, I made it wider for the linen and then I left it like this, but then from the knee up, I also trimmed a little bit off there. So those are the changes I made to my pattern. So let me know if you have, oh, wait a minute. Oh, all right. This is here. And this, this one is this, I think. All right, I'm all screwed up. All right, I think this is right for my, view. okay. So now I think I've got everything the way I need it here. So sorry. Okay, so if you have any questions about making these little adjustments to your pants, um, please let me know. I will tell you, because I already fit the, the Sorsha pattern to me to make the red ones, adjusting it for style, meaning making it come in a little bit more, making it a little bit more close fitting was easier to do because I already uh, perfected the fit in the red ones. So I wanted to share that with you. And now let me just show you, I can show you one other illustration of this. You have to remember if you um, change the waistline, you also have to change the pattern. So on my red, um, on my red linen pants, you can see here, if I put these together, the pink line is the original waist line edge. And I had to add all of this extra up here to get it to fit, right? So then to make it um, a shorter rise, I had to do the opposite. So if I lay this piece on top, you can see what's happening in here is it's shorter. So it's even shorter than, I mean, it's shorter than even the original because the pink line is the original. So I just wanted to show you that now I'm going to have sets of pockets for all my different styles based on where I want my waistband to sit. All right, so that's all the stuff I wanted to show you guys about this for today. Now let's look at this new pair of pants I'm working with and I wanna um, tell you what I've done so far. So you can see I've already sewn the pockets on. Okay, so there's my pockets. Okay, I will tell you, if you do not stabilize this edge before you sew the front pocket on, it can stretch and gape away from you. So make sure you stabilize that. I put a piece of um, Sokeezy Stay Tape onto the inside edge before I sewed it. So that's another, another good tip for doing the front pockets. Um, and I already clean finished everything. Um, so what I did was after I fit the single leg muslin that I just showed you, I cut these out and I left, um, an extra half an inch on the side seams and the inseam. So I had one inch side seams, one inch inseams, and then I added also an extra inch at the top. I spaced them together before I cut the pocket. So I left the pocket, um, you know, I didn't cut open the pocket. I left it like this. I made sure the pants fit. I made a few minor adjustments and then I took off the extra seam allowance and I cut out my front pocket. So that was sort of a second check to make sure that I was happy with the way these were fitting because if you're using different fabric, so for example, you know, my muslin fabric, is this nice, soft, drapey, you know, it's very soft and drapey. This is a little bit stiffer and a little bit more substantial. So every fabric is going to fit you a little bit differently. So if you're working with your fit muslin and it doesn't agree exactly with your fabric, just leave a little extra around the sides, sew them together, but don't put the extra in. So if you leave an extra half an inch, just sew, um, 
at an inch, try it, make any little adjustments you might need, and then you can move on to trimming everything off and, um, you know, starting to sew. So I just want to show you here my pockets. Okay, and you can see that the pockets don't make it all the way to the end here. I added another little bit. I want to try a little bit of a wider um, fly and fly extension, um, cut on fly and zipper shield for this because I'm going to use um, the wider zipper. When I was making this pair that I have on now, it was a little bit... Um, the fly shield ended up being a little bit narrow um, at, compared to what I needed for the zipper because this is a little bit wider. If you're using like a more of a standard width pant zipper, see the difference? Um, and again, these are the Excella YKK zippers from Wawak. I love them. And just to review for you, listen to the sound of me zipping this one up. See how quiet that is? Now, listen to the sound of me zipping up a regular metal zipper. Hold on, let me find a regular one. Okay, so this is a regular metal zipper. Listen to the way it zips. See the difference? So all of that ratchety noise you hear with a regular zipper, you don't hear with these Excella zippers. And I will tell you, the reason why you don't hear it is because they, they unzip and zip like butter. They're just so nice. So I'm going to be using this zipper and I think it's I'm just going to compare it to my, so it's still a good length. My rise is a little bit shorter, but I can still fit that on. So today what I want to show you is how to do the cut on fly. And I'm just going to put these um, like this just for a hot second. So the left side which is now wrong side face up has just got the cut on fly piece and the, the right piece has the cut on fly piece plus the zipper shield, which will, which will fold in half like this later. So I just wanted to show you, those are the two pieces. And then what I want to do here is I had marked, I don't know if you can see it, but I marked the um, stitching line and I think for accurate sewing, sometimes it's easier if you mark your edges. So I'm gonna put these right sides together here like this. And when you line up your, your fronts, what you wanna do is you wanna line them up so that the waistline is lining up, the top of the fly pieces are lining up, and then the crotch edges are lining up. So I'm just going to get that all lined up like this. Okay. And with them lined up, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark my the stitching line that I have to stitch through. Now, we are going to baste the center front seam to a certain point and then we're going to switch to sewing. So again, I'm just making sure everything is lined up nice and neat. And I already have it marked, but I'm just going to mark it again so you can see. So all of the seam allowances here are a half an inch, so I'm going to dash those in so you can see. And then when I get to here, to the top, um, I put my um, I put my interfacing on so I know that I can just stitch right along that edge. Well, it's right here; you can't see it anymore. But basically, if I measure from the edge of my interfacing just slightly over, it's six inches. So I'm going to measure six inches over here, and I'm going to draw the top of the line. Okay, and then I'm going to connect them. So the center front edge is, you know, it's a half an inch away from the edge here, and then it goes straight up. So if you draw it in neatly, then you know you're going to be stitching it accurately because you need this to be accurate because that's where your center front zipper is going to open. So 
Another fun thing, I have these um, magic pins from um, Taylor Seville Company. And the see how sm small these are or how short these are? I originally purchased these long ones. And I will tell you, these longer ones are not good for garment sewing because they bend and they get wrecked in you know they just bend out of shape they're very fragile and they're they're more for quilting or things where you need longer pins so these are the 1 and 7 16 so just over like one and a half inches and they're perfect for garment sewing so i'm gonna just pin along my um basting line and I am going to baste till about here, maybe an inch or an inch and a half above where the, um, the, the crotch curve stops. So I'm going to maybe stop right here. And then from here down, I am going to sew um, the front crotch um, shut permanently. So notice I'm putting my pins in at an angle. That'll make them easy to take out as I come to them. All right, so let's baste this now. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to put my stitch length on five millimeters. And I am just going to start stitching. I'm not going to back tack because I want to easily take that out. So you can see how easy these pins are to take out. So when I get down to my little dot here, hey Amelia, welcome. We're sewing the front crotch, I mean the, um, the cut on fly, you made it for the first step. We're just basting the center front together. Mary says she usually measures that basting length with the zipper she's going to be using. That is a way you can do it, Mary. That's a good way. I'm going to use the um, the length of my actual cut on fly piece to check that in a minute. All right, now I'm sewing. Oops, wait a minute. Hold on, back up. I forgot to make my stitch length regular. I'm going to 3.0 now. And I'm just gonna start over here where I started sewing and sew it again. All right, let me just sew this permanently here. All right. All right, so now I've got that sewn. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna get my zipper now, see, the important thing is I'm going to have to trim some of the tape off of the bottom of the zipper because I want my top stops, which are these guys right here, these big top stops, I want those a half an inch from the top of my pants. Um, because you want the seam for the half an inch waistband to be right next to these top stops. Okay, so... We're going to measure, I'm going to use my little chalk. Oh, and actually we're going to do it on the wrong side because the wrong side's face up. So I'm just going to mark my half an inch like this just to make sure I'm, oh, actually I'm doing it the wrong way, dummy. We want it to be a half an inch from the top. Oh my God, help me now. All right. So see these little those little little ends are going to stick out past the waistline. And Barbara's asking me about the name of those pins. I don't have a link for those yet, but I do have Oh my god, I have way too much stuff going on here right now. Hold on. No. Um, wait a 
Okay, so this is what they look like. Magic pins. Okay, and they're from Taylor Seville. They don't sell directly, but you can find them. Um, Wawak has them, I believe. So you can get them at Wawak, but they come in this little cool little box. So that's what they look like, magic pins. Um, you Take My Life says, thank you for sharing your knowledge. I've been watching and learning from your videos a long time. Happy to finally catch a live stream. Well, I'm so happy you caught me too. Um, all right, so this has to stick up past the waist that little bit so the top stops are a half an inch from the waistline. And then you can see this is going to be a little bit too long, but I'm not going to worry about it. Well, actually, you know what? I'm just going to trim it. I'm just going to trim it a little bit so it doesn't stick out past the, um, you know, so it doesn't stick out past the bottom of this. And I'm noticing another thing that I did not do when I trimmed off the zipper fly shield here, I didn't trim this lower edge with it. So keep in mind that this lower edge needs to be a quarter inch shorter so it doesn't show when you do the so it doesn't show when you fold the, the fly piece into place. I mean the zipper shield into place. So that really needs to be shorter like that. All right, so remember to do that. I forgot. Okay, so now we are ready to start working on our zipper. And the first thing we're going to do here is I've got my left fly piece. Oh, Karen wants to know um, where I get the zippers. It's Wawak, W A W A K, Wawak.com. And that's where they have the um, zippers and you can also get the magic pins there. I will put a link to that after the video so you can go get zippers. They have all kinds and it is the um, YKK Excella zipper is what I'm using. So our left fly is face up, right? This is our right fly and our um, zipper shield. I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller here. Hold on a little bit smaller so I'm not so much in the way okay all right so I'm gonna open this up like this now this is where the basting is right here right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my zipper and I'm going to position it so that the top of the zipper is where I drew that mark so the stops are, oh, Amy, thank you. That's Wawak. I should have typed it in the chat. I'm sorry. Um, that where I marked is right flush with the um, waistline edge. And I'm just going to stick a pin in there for a second so I can see that it's in and it's accurate. So the top is even with the waist. And then this side, this side of the twill tape needs to be butted up right against the center front basted seam. Okay, so I'm going to just put in, you just need three pins for this really. Okay, and then we're going to be sewing from top to bottom and I just want to make sure on my opposite side look what's happening here this is turning into a mess so I'm going to unpin this one. Oh, I caught this in my basting let me just do this all right you want to make sure the, the um, pocket piece doesn't get screwed up into your basting let me just straighten this back out you don't need to have a disaster before I even get started. So, oh yeah, I made a mess of this. Look at, all right, wait a minute. I'm just gonna, oh yeah, this is all scrunched up. Okay, hold on one second here. Let me take this back out again. I'm just gonna, yeah, hold 
then I'm going to take this basting out and then because we don't want that to be screwed up so this is something to check and what I did when I was making my red linen pants and I forgot to do it is with this laying nice and flat like this you know what I'm going to use I bet you you can guess I'm going to use one of my sew tights we're going to use this big four incher now here's the thing about working with these sew tights if you are going to baste and it's going to be near your needle put the color side face down so if I have this like this okay you can see now that's not going to go anywhere right that's going to stay nice and in place and because the plastic side is on the underneath it's not going to get stuck onto the um onto the metal uh, needle plate so let me just do that again so I'm going to rebaste and actually I can put it through all the layers and hold everything right so now it's there and it's there and you can see that's holding that and that's not going to get in trouble like we just did so let me just rebase this I'm sorry okay but you'll notice I can put this so tight right on my metal um, right on my metal stitch plate and it doesn't get caught on it all right so basting one more time sorry all right well okay so now let's look at that look how lovely okay so another use for so tight hold all the layers together all right so getting back to our zipper the zipper is going to go against the basted let me just trim this here hold on right against the right fly piece I'm going to line that up so it's it's right there and I'm going to put one of my little pins right here like that and then I'm going to just make sure this edge of the zipper is butted up against that like that and I'm just going to put probably two more zip two more pins like this now I'm not I don't have the luxury of working with a zipper that's longer than I need so what I'm going to do now is I am going to take another pin and I'm going to put it right here on the side I'm going to sew then I'm going to take this top pin out and I'm going to unzip my zipper a little bit so I can start sewing from the top edge and not have that pool be in the way so see how I have it set up so the first step here is we're going to sew the zipper to the right fly slash cut on shield or zipper shield I mean and the thing about this is you do not have to sew really close to the teeth so I'm using my straight stitch foot and I'll be able to sew perfectly fine that way I'm gonna make my stitch length 3.0 just gonna back tack up at the top oops Let me back tack a little bit sorry all right the cool thing about this stitching is it's not going to show anywhere so you don't need to worry about it if you get a little crazy Oh, <laughs> take your, you taking my life says you need, no need to apologize. Um, well, if you follow along with me on a regular basis, you will find out that I'm the queen of making mistakes. So just, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so see how, I think you can almost see how 
the pool is dragging in. See that little dent right there? That's because the pool is right there and it draws in the twill tape. So when I get to just before that dip, I'm going to lift my needle, I mean my presser foot, and I'm going to zip the zipper back up now that I've done the top. Like this. And then I can continue stitching my zipper. I'm just going to stitch it all the way down. So the zipper tape should be at least a quarter inch above the bottom edge of this right fly piece because we're going to be finishing that later. All right, so there is my first stitching job. The next step is we are going to turn this around like this. Okay, so now we've got it so the right fly piece is on top. I'm going to open it back up so you can see. Um, I'm going to put it back down and, oh, actually, let me just do it like this. I'm going to leave it like that. So we need to sew, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get my iron. We have to do a pressing thing. Hold on. So at this point, some people will, or some techniques show you to top stitch right along this edge. We're not going to be doing that. We are just going to press it. And this is one of the, the benefits of having a, um, uh, what do I want to say? Um, this is one of the benefits of having a metal coil here because, or metal teeth, because I can really iron it nice and flat without worrying about melting my nylon coil. Okay, so see that's nice and flat now. Okay, so the next step is, that I was all excited to do, is I'm going to turn it this way now. And you can see, we can see the zipper, right? There's the left fly piece. This is our right fly piece. I've pressed that nice and neat. The next step is we're gonna sew this side of the zipper to the left fly piece. And again, I'm just gonna put in a few pins. Now, I can't, um, I can't unzip it at the top this time, so I'm just gonna sew a little bit farther away. Or, I mean, I could get my zipper foot, but I've been just sewing it with my straight stitch foot and it's been, it's been okay. Oh, actually, I'm going to put these in backwards or upside down. I'm going to sew from the bottom to the top. Okay. All right, so now let's sew this side of the zipper. And I'm just going to start right here and stitch it. When I get to the top here, I'm going to sort of pull this straight, pull this straight here with my finger, and I'm going to stitch it all the way up. Okay, so now I've got my zipper is sewn on to both sides, left and right. I'm going to turn it this way. Oh, before I turn it, I am going to take my sew tight and I am going to put it on here so it holds all of this out of the way. I don't want any of this getting in my way. Oh, actually, no, hold on. I'm going to open it up first, sorry. Let's open it up. All right, let's open it. Like this. All right, so it needs to be open like this. Our next step is we're going to do uh, the straight part of our fly. And I'm going to put my sew tight right here to keep this fly piece from flopping in the way. Okay, because I don't want in, to catch any of this in my stitching. I just want to stitch over here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to design the, um, 
the front fly. Now the first thing I want to do is feel for where my um, I want to feel for where my uh, metal teeth are. This is a wider zipper, so I'm going to do a little bit of a wider fly. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do an inch and a half because if I feel for this top stop or the bottom stop is right here. So if I mark that on my front of my pants, it's right here. Okay, we do not want to touch, we do not want to sew over that. Okay, so I am going to do an inch and a half fly here. So that is one of the downsides to using the wider zippers. You need a wider fly because otherwise you'd be sewing in the teeth. Okay, so there is my straight part, and I want to catch the bottom of the fly piece, okay, and I can feel that under here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel for that, and I'm just going to make myself a little box across the bottom, or a little straight line here like that, so I can feel that it's hitting, oh, maybe a little bit higher, hold on put it right here. Okay. And then I'm going to just create the curve from there. You know, and again, I just want to make sure I don't hit that top bottom stop. So to start this fly, we're only going to stitch the top straight part. Okay. So I'm going to stop stitching and I'll put a little pin to remind myself I'm going to stop stitching about here. Okay, that's where I'm going to stop stitching because we want this part of the stitching to hold down the right fly shield later. Okay, so now I've got this. I'm just going to use the thread in my machine to top stitch, but I'm going to make it like for a 4.0 stitch length. And basically what we're going to do here is I am just going to start stitching through all the layers on the left side. I'm not catching any of the right pieces, just the left, left fly, and maybe the zipper twill tape might get in there a little bit, but basically we're just going to top stitch down like this. Now when I get to near my pin, I'm not going to back tack, I'm just going to stop, I'll stop there, I'm going to pull my threads out, uh oh, oh I ran out of bobbin thread, oh look it, I ran out of bobbin thread at just the right time, there's my tail right there, see, fabulous. So I'm gonna cut the I'm gonna cut the tail, but I'm gonna also leave a tail. And actually, now I have to wind a bobbin. I'm so sorry. All right, so let me just wind a bobbin. So while I'm winding the bobbin, I'm just gonna tell you that what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the needle thread to the bottom to the back, and we're gonna tie a knot. So basically, well, that's winding. I'm going to tease this thread. Let me get in there close so you can see. So see the thread right here? I'm going to tease this to the inside right here. And I'm going to tie a knot. I'm going to tie a square knot. So basically I'm going to go left over right, right over left. And I'm going to do it twice. And that will secure the top of the top section of my top stitching. So right over left, left over right, and I'm going to do it twice. And then that will secure my top stitching. And I'm going to go left over right. And then right over left. Now, if you don't want to do a knot, you can sew a bar tack over your join, and that will also hide it from view. But basically, I'm going to try to show you how you can make it look like you never stopped. So see, there's where my stop is right there. 
and the, there's it just ends. I don't know if you can see that because I don't have a super contrasty color there, but that's where it stops. Okay, so that secures the left fly and the zipper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 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 um zipper slash I mean right fly piece plus the zipper shield and I'm going to fold it in half and the thing about this is we want to fold it so that the edge of the fabric is even with the edge of the twill tape you don't want to overlap the zipper at all because then we're going to be folding it over into position after like this and we don't want to catch the twill tape in the fold okay so basically i'm going to fold this so it's even with that zipper twill tape like that and then all we're going to do is sew this short little end right here okay so it's folded in half i'm just going to sew this and i just want to make sure i'm like super sharp here Okay, so I'm just going to stick, you know, really we just need a single pin here to hold this. So because I serge this edge, I'm going to, I'm going to stitch right along the top of the serged edge. Okay. And all I'm sewing through is the, um, the right fly. Let me just put my new thing in there. Okay. Oh, I got to thread my machine. Sorry. All right, let me just get this in there. Okay. Let me just thread my needle. Oops, hold on one second. All right. Okay, so now I'm just gonna sew this little short end. And I'm gonna sew right on top of my surged edge there. So technically you don't need to um, finish that short edge if you don't want to, because we are, you know, only a little bit will show after we sew this. Okay, I'm gonna back tack. I'm going to take it out and then we're going to let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. So I've sewed it. Now I'm going to cut my tail and I'm going to turn it to the right side like this. So see that's finished and the so tight thing is calling my name. I'm going to use it to poke out my corner. There, that makes a really good point turner. Then we're going to press it. So let me press it. Okay. So let's look and see how this is looking now. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see. So we're going to press it. like this. Let me just press it flat like this. Like we really don't want to catch the edge of this um, zipper in the fold. So when I fold it, I'm just going to fold it like this. Okay, and it's going to line up and hide the edge of, I'm sorry, the left piece. And so once I've got it folded into its permanent position, I'm going to um, press this. And actually, I think I made my left 
cut on fly a little bit too wide, so I might need to um, trim that off. I was playing with different widths to see if I could, you know, make it a little bit neater. Okay, so now that that is nicely folded, I am going to turn it around and we're going to take out the stitching. Or our basting. Okay, is that a good? Can you guys see what I'm doing? Just want to make sure that's nice and sharp. Okay, so I'm just going to pick out the top stitch here. And then if you take your you take the ball of your the ball of your seam ripper and slide it in there you can just do this and it will just very easily take out that basting okay so here we have our opening in our fly sorry about that So you can see there's our zipper okay there's and actually I probably should take the basting out before you start pressing because I actually pressed a crease in my center front let me just press that flat okay and then let's turn this back around here I want to make sure this is laying nice and flat now depending on the fabric you're using this fabric is a little bit bulkier than some of the other fabrics i've used so you might end up with a little pleat in here see how there's like a little fold what's going to hold that down is when we top stitch right here so after you take the stitching out i'm just going to pin right through this fold and then I'm going to look to make sure I'm catching the the outer edge of the right fly shield as well so I'm going to pin it a few times here and that's why it's important to really press that flat after you sew the um the zipper to the right fly and when you push that away make sure this is nice and crisp because then see how nice and neat you can um, pin it to the outside edge of the fly shield and that will secure everything so I'm going to pin one more pin as low as I can get here you know the other thing that's really nice about this fly technique is look at how much of an overlap you have there's no way that zipper is going to show um, when you're wearing it because it's so tucked in and that you've got almost a three quarter inch um, overlap or underlap. Okay, so our next step is we are just going to sew, let me make sure that's nice and sharp. I think that's nice and sharp maybe a little too bright oops all right so i'm going to just stitch right on the folded edge as far down as i can get and i'll make my stitch length about three for this or three and a half maybe all right and then i'm going to just take my pins out as i come to them And this is going to hold that whole right fly shield out of the way. I mean, hold it shut, I mean. And I'm basically going to stitch it on as far as I can get. I'm going to back tack. All right. All right, so now let's look at it from the inside all right so you can see it makes a really nice finish 
to to finish it up finally we're going to finish our um, top stitching and it's going to sort of catch right here to hold the bottom shut and then we're just going to sew a bar tack across both layers like this you know to hold these two shut but I am going to get my serger out and I'm going to serge this a little bit closer this needs to be much smaller so it doesn't show here so again I was kind of experimenting with making this wider to see what would happen. Um, this is too wide. I'm going to just cut that off. All right, so that's how you finish this. So from the right side, and now I want everything to stay put. So I'm going to take my um, sew tight, and I'm just going to hold everything together like this. Nice and neat. And we are going to start stitching I want to make sure I catch it. So I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to have my stitch length be four, four and a half again. Okay. So I'm going to take a couple stitches forward, a couple stitches back, and then I'm just going to carefully stitch. And as I start to come around, I'm going to curve. One stitch at a time until I make my curve. And now I'm going to take my last stitch and I'm trying to nail it into the end of my straight seam, which I think I did. So I'm going to pull it out. And let me just cut this. All right, so you can see there is the bottom of my fly. And I'm going to tease the um, thread to the back. And I'm just going to tie a knot like I did before. And so see how that closes or keeps that closed, right? So now it won't open to there. And then again, I'm going to stitch right here after I trim this. Let me move this out of the way now. Okay, so that's the completed. Oh, and look at that. I caught my pocket in my back tacking. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There. All right, so that is the completed fly on the inside and here is the fly on the outside okay and then later when I do the um, top stitching when I top stitch the back center back seam I'm going to come straight through and top stitch this too so that finishes the fly okay all right so let me know if you have any questions about this um, you know, I'm super excited to finish these because, um, you know, they're, I love the fabric. So next week we will be doing waistband. I'm going to, we'll sew the legs together and we'll do waistband. Depending on my schedule this week, I may have these already sewn together and I may have a third pair started. I don't know. Um, but I'm having so much fun sewing pants that, um, you know, who knows, I may end up with another pair started. So I hope you guys um, enjoyed this Fat Fit Friday, um, Sorsha Classic Slim Trousers Sew Along Part 2. And next week we will finish up the sew along. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Some of you probably have a three-day weekend because it's President's Day on Monday. So have a happy, you know, happy long weekend. Um, and I will see you next week on Friday for Fat Fit Friday. And Amy says she would like links to the fabric and the website you used. Okay, so I will put um, links to LA Finch Fabric and um, 
um, LA Finch Fabric is where I got this. I got the linen from Gorgeous Fabric, and I also got a black, of course I have to make a black pair, Mary, right? Um, I got this really nice black sateen. See, it's kind of shiny. That's to make a more dressy pair. Um, and I got this from Storybrooke Fabric. So I will put, um, I will put links to those three fabric stores in the description below. So if you want to go, uh, you know, fabric shopping for some fabric, you'll know where to get the good stuff. Um, and in any case, thank you guys so much. Uh, Laz Lazarus says beautiful work. Thank you so much. Um, Lean says, have a nice weekend, everyone. You have a nice weekend too. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'll see you guys again really soon.